Hello everyone, welcome to Edupedia World Videos. In today's lecture, we will discuss some questions and their solutions of the topic metals and non-metals. So, we will start with our question number one. Question number one says, which of the following metals will liberate hydrogen from dilute acids and give reasons? So the metals are sodium, iron, lead, copper and mercury. So we have to identify that which metal will liberate hydrogen from dilute acids. We all know about activity series. So the metals which occur above hydrogen in the activity series will liberate hydrogen from dilute acids. This is the activity or we can say the reactivity series of metals. Potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium, aluminium, carbon, zinc, iron, tin and lead. These metals occur above hydrogen in the activity series. So the metals which occur above hydrogen in the activity series will liberate hydrogen from dilute acids. So sodium, iron and lead occur above hydrogen in the activity series so they will liberate hydrogen from dilute acids and copper and mercury occur below hydrogen in the activity series so they will not liberate hydrogen from dilute acids so the metals are sodium iron and lead now coming to question number two Question number two says, what will happen if you keep a solution of copper sulfate in an iron vessel? So, there will be formation of holes in the iron vessel after several days. And in terms of activity series, iron is more reactive than copper. So iron will react with copper sulfate to form iron sulfate and copper metal. The chemical reaction which occur will be like this. Copper sulfate when it reacts with iron metal FeSO4 that is iron sulfate along with copper will be formed. And there will be deposition of copper. So this is the chemical reaction occurs when a solution of copper sulfate comes in contact with an iron vessel. Now coming to question number three. Which of the following elements or we can say metals will form basic oxides silicon sulfur selenium phosphorus and magnesium we all know that only metals will form basic oxides and out of these elements we all know that magnesium is a metal and other elements are either non-metals or semi-metals. So only metal will form basic oxides. So the solution to this question is magnesium. Magnesium will form a basic oxide that is MgO. Now coming to the next question. Name a metal which is the 
poorest conductor of electricity and the metal which is the best conductor of electricity. So in terms of electricity we have to find good conductor of electricity and bad conductor of or we can say poorest conductor of electricity. Poorest conductor of electricity. Any guesses? Iron. Iron is the poorest conductor of electricity and best conductor of electricity any guesses silver silver is the best conductor of electricity now coming to the next question the next question says why is sodium kept immersed in kerosene oil it is also related to the reactivity of sodium sodium is a very reactive metal when it is exposed to air it reacts vigorously with oxygen to give white sodium oxide. The reaction is so vigorous that sodium catches fire. So in order to prevent sodium to react with oxygen, it is kept immersed in kerosene oil. Now our next question. Which is more reactive? Calcium or zinc? And give reason. Again this question is related to activity series of metals. We all know that calcium appears above zinc in the activity series. So calcium is more reactive than zinc. Now coming to the next question. The next question says where can you find metals and non-metals in the periodic table? metals appear at the left hand side and middle part of the periodic table while non-metals appear at the right hand side of the periodic table. Our next question says what would you observe when zinc is added to a solution of iron sulfate? and write the chemical reaction. We all know that zinc is more electropositive than iron. So when zinc is added to a solution of iron sulfate, iron gets precipitated. We can also write the chemical re uh, reaction. This is iron sulfate, FeSO4. When zinc is added to the solution of iron sulfate, zinc sulfate that is ZnSO4 along with iron is formed. The light green color of the solution fades away. It is light green in color. So color fades away, it will become colorless. This is the chemical reaction and iron gets precipitated. Now coming to the next question. This question says we have to write the chemical equations for the reaction of iron with steam and calcium and potassium with water. First we will write chemical equation for iron with steam iron with steam. What happens when iron reacts with steam? 
we all know the chemical formula of iron is Fe when it reacts with steam that is water in gaseous form which is called steam Fe3O4 we have to balance this chemical equation by writing thrice Fe and 4H2O then Fe3O4 along with 4 moles of hydrogen will be formed. Now next chemical reaction calcium and potassium with water water first we will write the chem chemical reaction for calcium with water calcium chemical formula is Ca when it reacts with water twice H2O calcium hydroxide is formed CaOH whole twice along with hydrogen now we will write chemical reaction for potassium twice K twice H2O potassium hydroxide that is twice KOH along with hydrogen will be formed now next question which gas is produced when dilute HCl is added to a reactive metal and write chemical equation when iron reacts with dilute H2SO4 hydrogen gas is produced when dilute HCl is added to a reactive metal and the chemical equation will be like this iron Fe when it reacts with H2SO4 iron sulfate that is FeSO4 along with hydrogen so iron is a reactive metal and when sulfuric acid is added to it hydrogen gas will be liberated We will discuss some more questions in our next lecture. Thanks for watching Adupedia World Videos.